<laughs> okay, so, whoa. Why? Okay, so my chapter is 24, and my lesson is 5, and I'm going to be talking about migration and non-random mating, and how it affects genetic variation and relative proportions of genotypes and populations. And we're going to start off by discussing migration. So migration is basically when a small population moves or migrates to a, no a new location. And this tends to alter allele frequencies and genetic composition. Um, so migration, so if migration is the movement of individuals, like a small population from place to place. Bidirectional migration is when um, basically is basically the introduction of new mutated alleles into neighboring populations and it goes both ways. So it's not just like one population goes there. No, it's when um, they go in both directions which is shown by this picture or not I'll show this picture <laughs> you see how the eastern deer population and the western deer population um, mix and it's not just like the eastern deer population are going to the west usually it goes both ways so this movement of alleles into and out of a population is known as gene flow and this occurs in populations with different gene allele, or sorry, allele frequencies. So this here is, I really hope you can see it because I'm not sure how much you can see with this little red line thingy. But, um, oh wow, so distracted. Anyway, you see the... The different amount of alleles in both populations. I kind of just forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> Give me a second. Oh, right. So you see how the how now in population two, the Eastern Deer population, they have um, they used to have all blue alleles, and now they have less blue alleles and two red alleles. So now the allele frequency of the blue went down and the allele frequency of the red in population two went up. But in population one, the opposite occurred where um, the red um, allele frequency went down and the blue allele frequency went up. And yeah, this bidirectional migration reduces differences in allele frequencies between neighboring populations and increases genetic diversity meaning instead of it just being um an isol like instead of a population being isolated and just being like bam uniform alleles and um they all have the same things now there's an increase of genetic diversity and now you have a chance of having blue and red alleles so now um, I will move on to non-random mating and non-random mating well okay one more thing about bidirectional migration. So, if an allele is not as effective in its environment, so say, uh, say,
say being in Eastern Deer population, say that being light is um, not helpful and usually all the light deer get killed off first. Migration would introduce these alleles back into the population so that um, what the alleles that are lost um, like gets not replenished but like there wouldn't be as much of a um, decrease in alleles as there were before. So notice how this would also affect, um, this migration also affects allele frequency because what natural selection does, migration might, might um, try and kind of counteract by adding new alleles. Also, um, migration can introduce new mutated alleles into a population um, among neighboring populations, which can be good and bad. Okay, now I will talk about non-random mating. This is a little bit of a more interesting topic. I suppose it non-random mating is basically when individuals yeah, individuals choose mates based on genotypes or phenotypes. So this means that instead of just seeing anyone and picking them off the street and being like, "Hey, you, let's mate," um, there's actually some sort of selection process, whether it be because of a skin color, tall, uh, height, buffness, um, or in the animal world, intersexual selection, you know, like colorful tails and all of that. Um, either way, it's not random. You're choosing it. And this, there's um, different types of non-random mating. One type is a sort of mating, which is when individuals of similar phenotypes are more likely to mate with each other. So, uh, since I'm short, that would mean that I'm more likely to mate with, eh, that I am more likely to mate with other short people. And if this, if our shortness is due to similar genotypes, then this leads to an increase in homology in a population. Have, which is this type of mating is known as a sort of a positive assortive mating. However, if um, opposite um, individuals of opposite genotypes are attracted, so short people are attracted to tall people, then this would lead to an increase in heterozygosity, heterozygy, whatever word is correct, <laughs> heterozygousness. <laughs> But, um, yeah, so this, a preference of dissimilar phenotypes would result in a greater population of heterozygous individuals, and a pheno if phenotypes are similar to genotypes and they mate, then this would increase homozygous individuals. In reading, is a form, an extreme form of this sort of mating. It is when mates, oh, people, not people, sorry, individuals with similar ancestry. And when I say similar, I mean when your parents have one or more ancestors in common. Um, when this is when they mate, and this inbreeding is most likely to take place, or more likely to take place rather, within a small population because since there are less individuals, there is less mates to choose from, and a greater possibility that you will choose someone that you are related to. 
A good example of this is the Florida panther, whose homozygous offspring have lowered, um, have like lower fitness. And by lower fitness, I mean poor reproductive success because their sperm are of poor quality and quantity. And um, this, and if a uh, homozygous offspring are more likely to have lower fitness because it's a recessive trait or whatnot, then it is known as inbreeding depression because. Um, in, by inbreeding depression, we mean that, like, because inbreeding increases homozygousness, because um, it is there's a greater possibility that you will share the same alleles since you have the similar ancestors, then this inbreeding depression will cause will actually be detrimental to the population and. It might um, actually lead to extinction, which is happening to the panther now in Florida. Um, but, yep. In absence. Let me go back to the non animals. Yeah. So, in absence of other evolutionary factors, it is important to keep in mind that non random mating does not affect allele frequencies, unlike migration. Migration directly affects allele frequencies because you're seeing individuals with different alleles go, well, with alleles, obviously, go in and out of populations, which constantly changes the population. So, it's not it's no longer what it was before they left and before other individuals came in to the population. So in absence of other evolutionary factors, um, non-random mating does not affect allele frequencies but will affect the balance of genotypes predicted by the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium theorem. So this is because um, inbreeding, oh sorry, non-random mating doesn't favor any particular allele, so it doesn't say, oh, we like dominant alleles, or, oh, come on, Sid, <laughs> I hope you can't see that, or, oh, we like um, recessive alleles, but it does increase the likelihood of getting certain alleles, which could in turn affect the allele frequencies. And inbreeding does or can lead to negative or rare recessive alleles that are homozygous. So an example of this would be how royalty is used to practice, oh sorry, <laughs> royalty is used to um, like back in Europe, way back when, um, royalty used to only mate with royalty. And this was a good example of this is the House of Habs Habsburg. And they were known for like having a messed up jaw. And this was a recessive trait found in, well, not many people. <laughs> and uh, one of one of the later persons of the Habsburg family actually had such a bad case of it that they could not chew. Yeah, it's pretty bad. But yeah, so uh, if the allele is present in the individuals that are mating, then this does give a greater chance. This does have a greater chance that. Um, well, like, those individuals will have a greater chance of obtaining these negative, rare, recessive alleles, um, which are usually homozygous in nature. So, yeah, that's how non-random mating and migration affect it. And Sid needs to get off my computer. <laughs> okay.
thanks for listening, and goodbye!